from Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube. Covering SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Hi, welcome to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend and we are in Orlando, Florida at SAP Sapphire 2018 in the NetApp booth. We're excited to welcome to theCUBE the, from SAP, the SVP of Global Technology Partners, Joe Zarb. Joe, welcome to theCUBE. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Excited to uh, share with you all the great things that are going on here at Sapphire and with SAP. This event is huge. Bill McDermott was saying this morning in his keynote that it's the biggest Sapphire that you guys have ever done. And one of the th th numbers, he gave a lot of numbers this morning, I always geek out on numbers. Right. <laughs> he said, you guys are expecting about a million people to engage with SAP re related to the Sapphire. That's incredible. It's incredible, it's incredible. A million people, think about the global reach, a company with 70% of the world's commerce transactions going through our systems, people wanting to want to know what's next, what's coming out next from an innovation point of view, what, do our, what are our leaders saying, what are our partners saying about uh, where the future is, and it, it really speaks to the whole concept of digitizing business processes. Every, every company wants to be a startup, and I think what you're seeing here is a lot of that excitement, that SAP, we just consider ourselves a very big startup with a, a, a broad reach, so I think uh, Bill was able to capture that excitement, convey that excitement, and I think uh, the ecosystem is, is reflecting that, right? 46-year-old so, startup, nonetheless. Yeah, right, right? exactly, so exactly. So, as the leader of the technology partners, talk to us about how those technology partners have been fundamental in SAP's transformation. Totally fundamental, particularly as SAP starts to transform into really a platform company. Uh, the platform provides a level of abstraction that customers can leverage to simplify their infrastructure and their access to applications, and it also creates extensibility, and it's all about the partner ecosystem. So uh, one of the biggest agenda items that we have in terms of that is really the whole hyper-converged infrastructure play. And uh, it's really going to be something that is going to help customers innovate, drive down costs, and drive up ROI. It's just, there's, there's very few plays that are a, a triple whammy, and this is one of them. So the partner ecosystem to us that spans our global service providers, our technology partners, which are both hardware and software partners, but we also have data syndication partners, uh, and we have other partners in the management consulting fields, and, uh, et cetera. They all contribute to expanding and enhancing our digital platform and our applications. So one of the areas I like to challenge infrastructure com companies on, NetApp is a data-driven infrastructure company, and when you're talking to enterprise application-centric people, infrastructure is one of these things <laughs> that's an afterthought. Right. But HCI is really changing the game. NetApp's solid fire division, along with some of their now compute innovations to form this new HCI story. Can you provide some color? What's, what's the significance of having an HCI-based infrastructure for your SAP deployment? Yes, that's a great question. So first let me back up, and I completely agree with you. When you talk to most customers, their eyes glaze over <laughs> when you start talking about storage or what have you. But when you start talking about the sophisticated customers that are driving innovation and trying to transform their business, there's really three technical elements that they're very focused on. One is connectivity. They're trying to connect to all kinds of devices, business processes, and uh, aspects of their business that haven't been connected. They're connecting because they want to retrieve signals from areas in the field and areas of customers and products they've never collected before. As they collect these signals, they're creating tremendous storages of, of data. And so until you get over that, realize the enormity of that problem and the scope of how do you now take this data and turn it into a collection of perishable insights that you can act on, until you've reached that level of sophistication, you don't understand why a company like NetApp is, is critical to your entire digital infrastructure and story. And that whole hyper-converged area is really the ability to promise, it's a promise to the customer that their workload can scale essentially infinitely on premise, in the cloud, cloud to cloud, back to on premise. And so as SAP, as an application provider, we look at applications that are going to run at the edge, at the core and on premise, and in the cloud. 
HCI helps us deliver that vision at, at the application tier, but you have to have the platform and the infrastructure there. And NetApp is a great partner to help us uh, fulfill that vision, as well as other partners, but they're very key. So, you know, you, you have your business applications, you have SAP HANA from a database, a memory data, database capability. Now we're talking about the Leonardo stack. You have this, what's becoming a platform, and as a platform provider, you look towards your ecosystem to extend the capability of the platform to create more value. Where are you seeing the value generated in the partnership with NetApp? It's a great question. So all of our partners have the ability to one, reinforce uh, the dominance in those markets we choose to serve and those applications we choose to deliver. However, the real value of the ecosystem and a company like NetApp is when they take us out of our comfort zone. And by taking us out of our comfort zone, they're taking us to roll your own applications, custom applications, or third-party non-SAP applications where they're storing and managing the data, yet making it accessible to Leonardo for machine learning, to create blockchain uh, scenarios where we can create trusted relationships leveraging data that may not be SAP data. And uh, also, uh, in the whole Internet of Things, uh, connecting to sensors and using that data from sensors in ways that really have nothing to do with SAP's core applications per se, but may have uh, uh, benefits to the customer in ways that you know, really needs to be co-innovated. So our partners are a critical uh, player to put us outside of our comfort zone, force us to grow, force us to learn, force us to expand. And NetApp has proven you know, to be one of those partners that could deal with a myriad of data types from a myriad of applications that forces to stretch into you know, voice recognition, that forces the uh, data mining and data analytics and the like. So, as we talk about pushing out of your comfort zone, SAP has been extremely steady in being able to provide, make sure between hardware partners, whether it's appliance model for deployment of HANA to uh, partnerships with uh, first level support through uh, partners such as NetApp. Talk through where you guys are at in the partnership, specifically with a technology that's, that's killer that Bill talked about, which is SAP HANA on HCI. Are we going to see HANA on HCI in the near future? I mean, customers are really interested in it. And uh, it seems like a you know a slam dunk. For it me. seems like a no brainer, yeah, like right? No -brainer. Yeah, it looks yeah. seems like a no brainer, and it is. It is a no brainer. Um, we're going to see Hana on HCI, not because SAP wants Hana on HCI. It's because our customers want Hana on HCI, and we're slaves to our customers. So um, where we are right now is we we know that we are a trusted supplier and provider to our customers, and uh, they know that the SAP brand stands for integrity and uh, all of the illities that go with running a large complex uh, enterprise, reliability, serviceability, maintainability, et cetera. So we're, we're actually working very closely with all of our HCI partners to go through a rather arduous certification process. Through that certification process, it's a commitment that we're asking them to make and they're asking us to make for the long term. I don't like the word certification, I prefer new product introduction because what we're asking them to do is build their product, tune it to our products, we're going to do the same, and we're going to continuously innovate and continuously introduce new products. So the word, the former world word is certification. Uh, all I could say is we don't like to pre-release or announce anything, so watch this space, but I am so excited to be at TechEd. What are some of the, if we look at, at um, a retailer, for example, who has to work with, say it's a, a clothing, an apparel manufacturer, and they've got a designer they've got to work with, you know, textiles, and all these different sources of information. Um, and it might take a year from a design to go from concept to an actual product that they can sell. So you mentioned, um, and I really like that you talked about insights as perishable. We were talking about actionable insights. But for a company like an apparel company who ha has such a long cycle from concept to delivery, how will HCI facilitate them being able to link and sync what Bill McDermott said this morning is synchronize the supply chain with the demand chain? Right, right, yeah, so that whole value chain, value proposition. So the beautiful thing is, 
all of those companies have a track record and a history of data. A lot of that data is right now in NetApp. So there's a lot of learnings and knowledge that haven't been mined and pooled out of that data that exists today. HCI is going to enable a couple things. One is when you look at a distributed supply chain, we have probably the industry's leading distributed supply chain solution, track and trace capabilities to be able to uh, follow that product throughout its life cycle. As we capture that data with uh, HCI uh, uh, infrastructure, we're, we're going to be able to analyze and transform those business processes candidly in ways that we haven't thought of yet. The beauty of HCI is when you talk about retailers, you're oftentimes dealing with companies that have wire thin margins. So they want to be able to create products quickly, get them to market quickly, and do it within the cost constraints. HCI is one of those rare uh, platform and enabling technologies that delivers on that. It's going to allow you to right size your workload uh, in the cloud or on premise or on the right uh, size servers, et cetera, and it's going to allow you to scale up as needed and uh, manage a more uh, efficient yet effective uh, infrastructure. So I, I see HCI playing a role not only in retailers, but really across all industries. It, it, it's one of those you know, really beautiful horizontal technologies that adds immediate value to those people that have reached that maturity curve. So as we talk about these advanced applications, can't help but to get into topics such as IoT, Edge in general, Applications, as, as we look at SAP as a platform company, applications SAP may not build directly, but have to in a, in a, integrate with. How do you see HCI and your global partners figuring into those advanced applications and the infrastructure around that? Yeah, so that's a great question, thank you. Uh, if you really look at those new emerging applications that are edge, core, and cloud, lots of moving parts. Lots of moving parts uh, gives you the opportunity to right size the workload and the processing at the edge or at the core or at the cloud, but it also creates a tremendous amount of complexity. So to really create a breakthrough, you have to radically simplify and standardize the processes that manage that core cloud edge relationship. If you could create that environment, then people can deploy, manage, monitor, maintain these environments much more effectively with a lower skill set, right? So there's not that hurdle. I kind of think of it as, you know, today's uh, IT infrastructure is kind of like a manual car, you know, and as you get you know, uh, bigger IT, it becomes an 18-wheeler. It's a little hard to unwheel. You got to be really good at driving in reverse and stuff like that. When you add, you know, HCI, you're you're not necessarily going to an autonomous car, but you've definitely got an automatic transmission. You probably could do a couple things pretty well automatically, right? And that that allows a whole new class of drivers to get in the car. And so I think that's what HCI is going to do as the architectures and the uh, deployment methods get more complex. It's going to keep it manageable uh, and within a skill base and price point that people can live with. I like that analogy. I think that, that's very simple to follow, speaking of simplicity. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about what, what, when you guys are going to market with partners. You know, uh, Bill McDermott has been very vocal, as we talked about when we kicked off this segment, about wanting to be one of the top 10 most valuable brands among the likes of Apple, Coca-Cola, Mercedes-Benz, Google, who sell products that we can touch and wear and feel and see. With, with technology like SAP, and even, you know, say, what you're doing with NetApp on Hyperconverged, how, what's the conversation like when you're talking about products that, that people may not even know are under the hood? How do you kind of ignite a customer to be excited? Like what, what are some of those exciting customer examples that you see that really show how this technology from SAP and your partners can change a company, change an industry, change a life? Right, that's a great question. And that's really the essence of a brand, right? I, so first I would encourage all of your viewers Go play Bill's keynote from Sapphire today. I mean, I think he was totally evangelical and I think he painted the picture. So um, uh, from, from my perspective, the brand, uh, so first, all of those brands that you mentioned, right, Apple and Google, these are all loyal SAP customers, right? They're also SAP partners, right? So we're 
we're, we're, we're punching with the heavyweights, right? We're at, I think, nine, uh, number 17, right, uh, in brand uh, equity, and we're, we're working our way up. And I think our focus isn't so much touching and feeling our products. I think it's more about trust, making a promise and a commitment to the market, and that market validating that uh, commitment and statement with money. Basically buying our products, deploying our products, uh, and basing their business on our products. And uh, so when I think of SAP becoming that brand, uh, as more and more companies continue to rely on us, trust, on a, uh, trust in us, and as we become a more integrated you know, economy and society, they're going to realize you know, Apple is going to be able to trust Google because they're using SAP and they know there's integrity of the data in the process and Google's going to be able to trust their suppliers uh, like NetApp and HP and et cetera that, because they're using uh, SAP as well. So there's, there's this, uh, you know, basically this movement of, of trust and brand identity that will be validated by our customers. You know, we, we create the message, the customers create the brand, and so I think that's our approach. Like trust is the new currency. It is, it really is, particularly in a data-based, uh, data-oriented you know, uh, oriented society, right, and economy. Yeah, my good friend uh, Tom on Twitter said that the future is data, the future isn't databases. So, thought it was a brilliant uh, uh, quote, so shout out to Tom. So as we look at that, the future is data and not databases. And you guys have rolled out a fabulous database in HANA, but how do you refocus, not on the actual technology, but on the data itself, as it relates to, you know, NetApp has started to market themselves as a data-driven company. What's the relationship between the infrastructure, the database, the application, and the actual data? So, good question, it's a long answer, so let me try to net out okay. uh, a couple of key areas there. So if, if you kind of look at data, data is, uh, plays a, a point of origination where you're going to enter data and capture the transactions of the business. It's also the source of innovation. Uh, after capturing all that data, there are these perishable insights and there are these uh, anomalies and signals that are trapped in there that you're going to pull out. So when you look at the infrastructure itself, our belief is that um, consumers and the consumer experience with technology has uh, created uh, a very real-time society. We chat in real-time, we post images in real-time, we message in real-time, and we believe that level of uh, performance is what enterprises are going to demand. Uh, batch is going away. Uh, people, they don't want to hear, oh no, it takes you know, hours to sift through a petabyte of data. They don't want to hear it. Uh, so they want to move to, they want their answers now. And so that's what we've really focused on is that whole real-time uh, experience. And uh, we believe that data, like you said, data, it, it is going to be both the source of insights, it's going to be the uh, system of record, and then it's really going to be the basis of the next generation products and services. So if you look at all the companies that people are trying to, to copy and mirror, they're giving away their software product mm. and they're monetizing the insights that they glean from that data, right? So Facebook makes their money off of advertising that is based on your likes and preferences and uh, you know, shares, et cetera, like that. So their business isn't software, it's how do I monetize that data, that behavior that is trapped in that data, how do I surface those behaviors? So we think that's very core to us. We have a, a group within SAP that works with our partners and customers to help them build data-driven business models, data-driven business products, and data-driven uh, data uh, solutions. Uh, and NetApp is you know, core to all of that, right? I, I mean, I think once you start to get and start to deal with the order of magnitude of data that we're talking about here, you have to move to an HCI and you have to move to a trusted player like that. The Facebook example, as we wrap things up, you know, kind of just alluded to one of the things that I've heard some of your execs say, including your CMO, Alicia Tillman, where our customers don't care about the technology, they care about their customers. And you just kind of articulated that really yeah. well, that that's what you need to be able to enable is Completely what agree. Facebook is delivering, or Apple is delivering, or Google is delivering. So thanks so much, Joe, for stopping by and sharing what you guys are doing with 
partners to really kind of fundamentally change the direction that SAP is going in. Thanks, it's great to be here and thanks for having me. We want to thank you for watching theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend from Sapphire 2018. Thanks for watching.